Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Come here. I'm going to need you to turn it off because of the way it's looking. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Thank you for joining us. This is the Heart of David International Ministries. I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. This is our Saturday evening service. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory, glory, glory. Um, let me go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the ministry, Father God, of the Holy Ghost with power, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence that you have allowed us to come into your presence. We thank you for sound doctrine, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now send this word forth with power, Lord, with the ministry unto the Lord, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Thank you for signs and wonders. Thank you for deliverance and healing, Father God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for the power in your word. Thank you for the power in your prayer, Father God. Thank you for the power of obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Again, we'd like to uh, remind you that uh, to like, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Hallelujah. Like, subscribe, and share. And if you have any questions or any prayer requests, you can go to our website at hodim.org. Hodim.org. Or you can go to the, uh, uh, hallelujah, the Heart of David International Ministry. Glory to your mighty name. You can also contact me at hodim.org. 1117 at gmail.com. That is my personal email for the church. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Lord, we glorify you today. We praise you today and we magnify your holy name on today. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Father God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for your love. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, for washing all of our sins away in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. In the blessed name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're coming out of the book of John, the eighth chapter, verse seven. Hallelujah. This is where the woman was caught committing adultery. We don't know uh, she was caught in adultery. So, um, and then, back then, you were supposed to die. They were supposed to stone you. Marriage back then, and it still should be today, that is a very important covenant that people don't even really think of it as that. When you're married, soon as something go wrong, you ready to leave the marriage. Hallelujah. You don't want to fight for your marriage. You fight for anything, but you're not fighting for your marriage. You fight so hard to get that promotion, but you're not fighting that hard for your marriage. You're fighting that hard to get that degree, but you're not fighting that hard for your marriage. You're fighting so hard to get a promotion, but you're not fighting that hard for your marriage. Glory to God. Let's talk about this. We're talking about God is gracious. He is merciful. Hallelujah. He told the woman, go sin no more. Hallelujah. And we got to understand that the grace of God and his love and his grace and his mercy, if we come to true repentance, God will forgive us for all of our sins. Hallelujah. If we repent, glory to your mighty name. Let's, let's read this a little bit 
so we can get a little better understanding, a better picture of him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me go ahead and just start at verse 1. Our base scripture is John chapter 8, verse 7, but we're going to start at verse 1, and we're just going to read down a little bit. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Okay, it says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Jesus sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her <clears throat> in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. This lady got caught in adultery. I mean, they caught her in the very act of adultery with a man. Hallelujah. That was not her husband. Glory to God. Thank you. So she was caught in the very act. Verse 5 says, Now Moses in the law commanded, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? See, see verse 5, they're trying to set Jesus up. Let's read that again. And now, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but, but what sayest thou? Is this, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus Stop, stoop down, and with his finger wrote on the ground as as though he heard them not. Listen, they tried to catch Jesus, and Jesus didn't pay no attention to him. He just stooped on the ground, and he started writing in the dirt, in the sand, like he did not even hear them. Hallelujah. So then they continued. Asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that mm, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Jesus said, You that have never committed a sin, why don't you cast that stone? You be the first one that, that throws the stone at her. And they which heard it, being convicted in their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even until the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Now, listen. The woman was caught in adultery in the very act. And for you to be caught in adultery or even committing adultery, that was a death penalty. That was something you do not do. That is a covenant of covenants. Mm. Hallelujah. That might be a, that mm. next to you giving your life to Christ. That is that could, that's probably the most important covenant that you will ever make. She was caught in the very act of adultery. Glory to God. And they, they stood there and they're trying to tempt him. And what Jesus is saying is, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's fine. We understand that. <clears throat> but what happened was a lot of times when we come to Christ and now we are a child of God, we forget what we used to do. And a lot of times we judge people harder now that we are in, now that we are saved and given our life to Christ, than what we used to. I know we have to have a standard that's fine. I know we have to preach that's fine. 
but there still has to be a standard and you still have to do it in love. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read verse nine. Well, yeah, let's read verse nine. And they which heard this being convicted in their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the and the woman standing in the midst. They left and ain't nobody there but the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't nobody there but the word. Ain't nobody there but grace and mercy. Mm, glory to God. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Both thine accusers. Has no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord, and I. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, what it's saying is, is, is Jesus said, where are your accusers? She said, there are none, Lord. My God, thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, nor do I, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. He said, now go and sin no more. See, we got to remember once we get saved, we are not supposed to go and sin no more. The problem is we are up in church and we got every excuse to sin. You cannot take advantage of God's grace and mercy that he's put on your life. I know we make mistakes. I know we slip up sometimes, but that is no excuse for you to sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 10 again. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, in that moment, the lady had a chance to repent. Jesus said, I forgive you by her accusers leaving her. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. He has forgiven her from, for her sins. And he tells her, go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Mm. So once you come to Christ, we are supposed to go and sin no more. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are supposed to go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when, see, this shows the mercy of God. The mercy of God and God's forgiveness and, he, and his love in you and his love for you. Remember, God made the covenant of marriage. Outside of you giving your life to Christ Jesus, the next thing is your marriage, brothers, with your wife. The next thing is your marriage, sisters, with your husband. And it's sad we got to say the traditional marriage according to the Bible, which is a man and a woman, not somebody who had a sex change, who, who used to be a man and want to be a woman, not some... Mm, my God, not some woman who had a sex change who uh, who say she a man. Listen, 
I don't care what kind of sex change you get, whatever you came out of your mama, that's what you are. If you came out of your mama a girl, you are a girl. The surgery don't mean nothing. If you came out of your mama a boy, you are a boy. That surgery don't mean nothing in the eyes of God. And you mad at preachers for keeping a standard talking about sin. If we can't talk about the LBGT living in sin and abomination, there's no sense of us talking about adultery. There's no sense in us talking about fornication. There's no sense in us talking about bestiality. Listen to this. There's no sense in us mm, talking about domestic violence. There's no sense in us talking about rape and molestation. There's no sense in because all that is sin, all that is abomination, but you want to say this part is okay, but the other part is not. No, it's all under sin. It's all under abomination. Go and sin no more. Mean turn from your evil ways. God is here for you. God loves you. Mm. God is waiting for you to come and repent. He's waiting to wash you in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the blood that will never lose his power. Glory to God. It was Jesus' blood mm, that he shed it up on the cross. Hallelujah. That redeemed mankind. So now you can't be up in church and say, oh, Jesus, I love you. And you are a homosexual. This is your lifestyle. And, and you're being deceived because you really think you're going to go to heaven. You can't be an adulterer saying Jesus is Lord. I don't care if you're a preacher or whatever. We got homosexual preachers. And, and they're deceived because you're not going to heaven in that lifestyle. God loves you. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. He loves you. But you also got to put away your wicked ways. Hallelujah. Stop beating your wife. Stop committing adultery. Glory to God. Stop raping your son and your daughter. Hallelujah. Glory. Go and sin no more. Glory to your mighty name. See, there's people that come to accuse us of things that we did or things that we used to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they, you know, I'm 53. I can run into somebody that's my age and they'll say, well, you used to do this. Me and you smoke weed together. Me and you got drunk together. Okay, I'm not denying that. That was way back in 1984. That was pretty much 40, 39, 40 years ago. My lifestyle has changed. You talk about people who used to be a pimp or used to be a prostitute. They've been out of their life, out of that lifestyle, even if they got out of it yesterday or they got out of it today because they got saved. They may have not been in that lifestyle in 10 years or 30 years or 40 years, but you bringing it up. Jesus said, go and sin no more. I have washed all your sins away. That's what he's telling this woman who is caught in adultery. People got to understand marriage is sacred. It is a covenant that you are not to look. What God has put together, no, let no man put asunder. Now, some of y'all got married and God didn't tell y'all to marry that man. God didn't tell you to marry that woman. And some of y'all fighting to keep that marriage together because you just believe, you know, it's going to work. That's on you. Hallelujah. And then you got people that don't want to be married because they seen too many bad marriages. Hallelujah. The husband and the wife cheating on each other. They both got outside children. The devil is a liar. And for some reason, you just don't believe that a man can be faithful to his wife. And for some reason, you don't believe that a woman can be faithful to her husband. That is deception because that is what's going on in the world. Uh, look, I, I say it all the time. Go and sin no more. That Look, that includes these movies. I told you before. I ain't going to see another Marvel movie or DC movie. Everything is demonic. They are literally doing witchcraft on the screen. Hallelujah. 
and every show that you watch on TV, everybody committing adultery, everybody committing fornication, they homosexuals, they bisexuals, they masturbating, all this stuff. That is sin. Get it out of your life. Glory to God. If we're going to come to Christ, let's come to Christ and give him, give him our whole heart. Not the, not holding that piece back. Because I, I really like this. But Lord, I'm going to give you my whole heart, but I'm going to hold this piece right here. I don't want to give it up. There's people that have been in church mm, for 20, 30 years, for five years, and not one time have you gave up smoking. Smoking is bondage. If you, if you are addicted to anything, it's bondage. Hallelujah. Some of y'all is bondage or y'all idols are these soaps. Hallelujah. It's, it's an idol because you can't stand to miss it. Whatever you put over Christ, that becomes your idol. Hallelujah. Some of y'all don't attend church because you want to watch the basketball game. Amen. You're supposed to be at church, but you want to watch the basketball game. And how many times have you put a, a sporting event over attending church? Now, you can tell me, well, we don't got to go to church that much, but and church should be in your heart. But whenever you're putting everything over church, over God, over the word of God, that becomes your idol. If you're putting your wife above the church, she is your item. If you're putting your kids above the church, they are your item. If you are putting your husband above the church, and when I say church, I really mean Christ. If you're putting your children above Christ, your spouse above Christ, your work above Christ, your finances above Christ, that is your item. We want to get every idol out of our life. Every idol we want to get out of our life. He said, go and sin no more. Where are your accusers? See, even your accuser, accusers have some sin in their life if they are not saved. They are done things against the law. Hallelujah. They got the look here when he talked to him, God did everything according to the law of Moses. So if you have, you need to be the one to throw the first stone at him. We got to understand and we got to know and we got to realize that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you, hey, look, when you say you love God, do you really love God? Do have you put anything above Christ Jesus? I mean, think about it. It's something for you to think about. Have you, mm, glory to God, put anything above Christ Jesus? That's what I want to know. Have you put anything above Christ Jesus? Glory to your mighty name. If you have put anything or anyone above Christ Jesus, that is an idol that you need to deal with. Hallelujah. We bind up and we cast out every devil, every demon, every idol. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Father God, we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you for wisdom. Hallelujah, the knowledge and understanding that we always rightly divide the word of truth, that we apply your word to our life daily in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for opening up doors for us, Father God. Hallelujah, that only you can open, Father God. You have given us the job that everybody said we wouldn't qualify for, and you have given it to us, and you've given us the ability to do it right in the name of of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's go. <clears throat> let's read verse 11. I mean, verse 10, 11, and 12 in St. John chapter 8. When Jesus lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? And she said, no man, Lord. 
And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, let's talk about this. Let's go back to the spiritual aspects. Even the devils and the demons mm, that was in these Sadducees and Pharisees knew the power of God. They knew Jesus was the son of God. They're trying to uh, uh, attack uh, the flesh because he was in the flesh at that time. He was in the, he was human and divine. So they trying to trip him up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in God's infinite wisdom and knowledge, nobody is greater than God. Jesus said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are my ways your ways. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Glory to your name. Let's go there real quick and let's read it. Mm. Glory, glory, glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Isaiah 54, or is it 55? Here we go, Isaiah 55 and 8. Let's read it. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said it the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 and 8, he just told you. Mm. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said it the Lord. For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. He told you that. So they, they still trying to get him, even though they know that their thoughts are not are, are not his thoughts and hit then their ways are not his ways. Because God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts and his ways higher than your ways. He's talking about mankind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. So God shows wisdom. Mm. And he shows understanding. And he shows mercy in this passage. Mm. So let's read it again. I'm going to read all the 10, 11, and 12 in St. John 8, 10 through 12. When Jesus had lifted up, his, lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers has no man condemned thee she said no man lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more hallelujah verse 12 then jesus spake again unto them saying i am the light of the world mm. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, glory to God, but shall have, but shall have the light of life, my God. He that followeth me mm, mm, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. See, I want the light of life in me. Hallelujah, glory to your mighty name. You want the light of Christ on the inside of you, especially right now in today's times. You got people who say they say, and they don't have the light of Christ on the inside of them. They are denying Christ because they're scared of what people are going to say. They are denying Christ because they don't want to lose membership. They don't want to lose nobody giving a big offering or, or big tithes and pledges. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father, which is up in heaven. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew. Let's read that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Leave us Matthew 10. And 32, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. It says this, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my father, which is in heaven. So he's telling you right here, if you deny me in front of me and I'm going to deny you in front of my father. I don't care about you being in church. I don't care if you're the apostle or the prophet. I don't care if you run the praise team and the choir. I don't care if you're a deacon. I don't care if you're a minister or an evangelist. I don't care if you call yourself a prayer warrior. If you deny me before men, so will I deny you before my father, which is up in the heavens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's go back over to John chapter 8, and we're going to read verse 12 again. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's read down to verse 13, and we're going to read a little bit. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not, thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. Mm, glory to God. For I know whence I came and whether I go. But ye cannot tell whence I came and whether I go. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge mm, no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. My God, thank you. Yet if I judge, my judgment is true. Glory to God. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. I am one that bear witness of myself and my father who bears witness with me. There are two witnesses. Hallelujah. How can you go up against God? And how can you go up against the word of God? God is power. The word of God, which is Jesus, have bearing witness. They are the two witnesses. We got too many people today, you don't want to acknowledge Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. You can't get to God without going through Jesus. Understand something. Jesus told the lady called in adultery, go and sin no more, meaning I have forgiven you. And your worst sin I still have mercy on you. I still have compassion on you. Now go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Now she is washed in the blood of Jesus. She's washed by the word of God. And she is to go and sin no more. Glory to your mighty name. When Jesus cleanses you and washes you up, you are to go and sin no more. Glory to your mighty name. I said, go and sin no more. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless you today. We honor you and we magnify you in the precious name 
of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when we go back down to verse 7 in John chapter 8, verse 7, it says this. So when they continued asking him, lifted up, lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. Mm. And again, he stood down and wrote on the ground. He said, you without sin, cast a stone without to her first. You are the one that's, that, that cast the first stone. You. I'm not giving you license to sin, to commit adultery. I'm saying it's the mercy of God. Everybody don't have the same mercy. There's people who've been killed who got caught in adultery. And both of them got killed. Lord Jesus Christ, help me today. Father God, we pray for more grace and mercy, Lord. Lord, we pray that we sin no more. Hallelujah. I say we pray that we sin no more. We need the hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew. Chapter 5. And let's go <clears throat> to... Matthew chapter five. Let's go. Let's read verse six, seven, and eight. Matthew chapter five, verse six through eight. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So you want to hunger and thirst after righteousness? Mm, glory to God. You want to be merciful mm, so you can obtain mercy? And you want to have a pure heart so you can see God? Now let's go to six. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now let's go on over to John chapter seven. Mm. And let's read verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, according to Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, you go over to John chapter 7, in verse 37 and 38, let's read that. John chapter 7, verse 37, 38. And in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, if any man got that pure heart, let him come unto me. If anybody is merciful, let him come unto me. If any, my, oh my God, if you're hunger and thirsting, if you're hunger and thirst after righteousness, let him come unto me. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall, shall, shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water. Glory to God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The living water is Christ Jesus. That living water is the word of God. If you hunger and thirst after me, glory to God. Hallelujah. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And if you believe 
on me as the scripture has said. My God, mm. out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you believe on me as the scripture has said, out of your belly shall show rivers of living water. Father God, we pray right now and we thank you. Mm. Hallelujah, that you have allowed us to minister unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Father God, we thank you for this word to go forth. We thank you that deliverance go forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We glorify and we praise you today. We thank you for this word. We thank you that we digest this word, that we swallow this word. Lord, that this word uh, 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 help us, Lord. Mm. And give us spiritual nutrients, Father God, for the renewing of our mind to stay with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you today in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for every soul that you have saved on the day and every soul that you save every day. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are about to go. I need to ask you. Hallelujah. If you are not saved, this is the best time for you to get saved. If you are a backslider or out of fellow fellowship with Christ, this is the best time for you to come to Christ. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I confess my sins unto you. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for shedding your blood on the cross. I thank you for the blood that washes me clean from all sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your grace and mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now all you got to do is, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, your confession is Jesus Christ is Lord. And I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for saving me and washing all my sins away. The other thing is you got to believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. And he rose on the third day and he took all of your sins away. If you did that, if you believe that you are saved. Hallelujah. Now I tell you to get the Bible and start reading it. Hallelujah. Get a prayer light. Start praying. Start meditating on the word of God. Start seeking God with your whole heart. Believe on Christ Jesus as the scripture has said. Glory to God. And rivers of living water will come out of you. Mm. Glory to your mighty name. Now, I tell you, after you do all that, you pray and ask God to get you to a church. Mm. Get you to a church. Hallelujah. That believes in the word of God. That believes in deliverance. That believes in the signs and wonders. That believes in the power of God. Bible believe in church. Somebody who rightly divides the word of truth. That believe in a prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Ask the Lord to get you to the right church. Ask the Lord to, to send you to the uh, right church that you get to the right pastor. That somebody who's been in Christ for a minute. That Lord, I want somebody to mentor me who really loves you and really say who was really saved. Now, we thank you for uh, uh, for being with us. Hallelujah. We will be with you Tuesday at uh, 6.30 for our corporate prayer and 7.20 for our midweek service. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his night, might. Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen.